Good morning, everybody, on this wonderful Sunday, as it were, actually Friday, but sad, it is a Sunday for us, it's a holy day. It is good for us to be together on this morning, very good to be together on this morning. Um, let, us, let us join together this morning in um, something called active response to the cross. Now, active response to the cross is huge for all of us. Active response to the cross is what you and I should respond to what happened on the cross many, many years ago. Thousands of years ago, for that, for that matter. So this morning is a very, very holy day for you and I. And on this holy day, we need to become holy. We need to forget what the world has offered us. We need to give, forget what the world has given us. We need to forget our worries. We need to forget a lot of stuff out there. So this morning, as we prepare ourselves, I just want to ask you to just quieten yourself. And then let's start with prayer. Father, we come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, this morning, who laid down his life more than 2,000 years ago. So that we, Lord, could be freed up, so that we could have a resurrected life, Lord. Something, Father God, as a as a gift that we were given. And Father, today we come and we commemorate the, 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 the pain and the suffering that he went through so that we could have this freedom. Help us in this morning and speak to us each individually in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so so what I want to do is I want to start off with a with a with a with a small a, um, a quote from from um, Eugene Peterson. Eugene Peterson is the guy that that did the the Message Bible, and and he and he takes from from a, from a, a paraphrase from from a book, eat eat the book by by written by William B. Edmund. But he says this. He says, if I'm not living in active response to the living God, reading about His creation, come salvation, holiness won't hold my interest. For very long the most important question isn't what does this mean but what can i obey now that's what you and i have to answer today what can we obey simple obedience will open up our lives to a text more quickly than any number of bible studies then he carries on to say dictionaries concordances any one of those things will not help us if we do not come to a place and respond to the cross as a living people as Jesus would want us to do. Now, before I go any further, I want to just share this with you. That Jesus said this, I will do what the Father requires of me so that the world will know I love him. So I say to you this morning, if Christ, who is the Son of God, says this to his Father, I will do what the Father requires of me, so that the world will know that I love him. What will you and I do in this morning for Jesus, for the gift that God gave us, his son Jesus Christ? Will we have exactly that same attitude? Will we come to a place this morning and to say, we will do what the Father requires us to do? In other words, the Father requires us to love his son as much as his son loves us. Now that's pretty deep. I think I don't know where you guys are on with that, but that, that's that's pretty far because I mean that's very that's exactly where we are. That's why exactly why we do Easter. That's exactly why we in this day. It's because this is where he was preparing himself to walk and to go and be be crucified. This is not it's not easy. I don't think one of us can really get ourselves our head around this as to what pain he really took on that day. So I want to say this morning, um to you out there in your home, with your kids, with your family. Friend, what does Jesus really mean to you? What does this day mean to you? Has this day got any significance for you? Does it, does it speak to you? Do you? Can you resonate with what happened 2000 years ago? And if you can't, let us get ourselves a little bit closer to that and see how we will go on this and find ourselves along and on this journey so what does active response to the cross really mean to you and i this morning the eternal god the god which we and i serve which is eternal 
desires that those who are called out of this world be his chosen ones. That's what this God's desire is. God's desire is that we that have been called out of this world. In other words, this world offers us nothing. Salvation through Christ offers us everything. So Christ, God looks at us this morning and he looks at his children and he says, where is the desire that you guys have of loving me the way you should? When my son said he does everything because he does it because he loves me, do you people do, or you sons and your daughters of mine, do you do it because of the same love that you carry in your heart? So you say to me, the period on our calendar calls for this active response to the calendar. Peter, are you right? I said, yeah, it does. But you see, this, is, this day is only just a reminder. This day is a commemoration. But this day is the day that you and I come together and remember why Christ died on the cross. This day makes it possible for you and I to make this part of our life and to and, and not just commemorate the day, but to live out today, to make something happen inside of you. Because on the outside, everything is possible, but in the in inside, if it doesn't happen for you on the inside, where Christ doesn't connect with your spirit and my spirit, we cannot grow in, in God. And that's what he did. He came to give, give us that freedom, but that freedom is not, you can't see it from the outside. You can only feel it from the inside and our relationship to God and his word should be an active response to the cross so in other words what you do what I do what my manners are the way I do the, the, the way I, I, I show myself in, in public the way I show myself at home the way I show myself at work is there a Christ likeness that comes from that because that Christ likeness was given to me as a gift of the cross Something that God shared with me and wrote, and he, also, he, told, he said to me, Pete, write this down in, 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 when, I, when, I, when I prepared this, when I prepared this sermon. And he's, he gave me this. He says, if we that were dead in our relationship to God were made alive by God through his son, but are not living in an active response to that, we are still dead and lying to ourselves about being redeemed. Well, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a mouthful. So I don't know about you guys, but for me, I don't want to lie to myself. I want my redemption made, must be made real. My freedom must be made real. My salvation must be, must be shown to the world. And as we will break bread eventually, when we finish here today, I'm going to just ask you to maybe whatever is in your mind bothering you where you are right now, maybe they've got your kids are bothering you or whatever, maybe just quieten down the, 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 the place that you're in right now and, it, and just bring yourself to a complete, complete surrender to God this morning as we stand and carry on. You see, God's word, which has been given to us is the Bible. Now, the Bible is actually the voice of God. If we can read the Bible and hear God speaking to us, that means that we have an active response to the cross. Because everything written in the Bible from the beginning to the end, it was prophesied that Christ would come. It was prophesied that Christ would become our freedom. He came and he gave us the freedom. Now, what are we going to do with a prophecy? God can't get, God, God, thousands and thousands of years ago, God gave a prophecy that his son would be born and that his son would die so that you and I, can be free and because God is true to his word you see God doesn't lie when he made the prophecy when he made the promise through the prophecy God then brought the prophecy into being into this world now the prophecy can remain a prophecy or it can, can, can become alive and it can only become alive if you and I bring ourselves and say Lord Jesus what you did on that cross the pain that you took before you get there the the, the, the insults, the bruising that you took before you get there. Lord, oh, I, I, I feel that. I feel that. And if you did that for me, I need to actively respond to what you did on that cross for me. So we can write down verse after verse. We can come to a place that we make Bible reading every day part of our lives. But if we don't take what we read, if we don't take what, what, we, what, what we are taught in the church or Bible class or whatever the case may be, and put that into practice, then there is no active response to the cross. Guys and ladies, this morning, you ask me, Pete, what is active? I say to you, active is the following. It's doing, learning, applying. It's being energetic. It's being enthusiastic. It's being breathe. It's when you breathe. It's when you touch. It's when you walk. It's when you talk. It's when you share. All those things are active things. 
And those active things coming out of you should show Christ in your heart. You say, oh, good, I've got the activeness. How do I respond to that? It's quite simple. You respond by duplicating, as I just said now. We duplicate. And once we've duplicated, we only don't duplicate. We start applying what we duplicate. We don't speak it in duplication of word. We apply it into practice. And when we apply it into practice, we are showing God that we've actually received what he's asked us to receive. We've received his son in full that died on the cross for you and I. And if we take the Bible, the voice of God, and we apply it actively in our lives, it will teach us exactly how to do this active response to the cross. This, 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 this big thing in our life. I come to you this morning and I, and I ask you this morning where you are. What is your response to the cross? What is, what have you lived your response to the cross? Are you, are you living at full or not? We carry on. We say, who knows that we are not doing God? Do you know we're not doing God a favor? When we, when we come to us and we say we're giving him our time and our worship and our praise and our money. But we're just doing it because it's on the outside, but there's nothing on the inside. We're doing it to show the world, ah, you know what, I'm part and parcel of this. I'm doing it because it's expected of me. Nothing's expected of me. The only thing God expects from you and me is to love him completely. So yes, we can give him our time. We can give him our money. We can give him our, our worship. We can give him our praise. But if we don't do it, with a hundred percent um surrendered basis in other words acknowledging him in praise worship money whatever the case may be it's fruitless it's absolutely fruitless he died he gave it he died on the cross to give us freedom and the freedom that we have should be a god-given freedom my friend when we're doing this we're giving god our obedience as he required us to do and all god wants from you and i it's not much he just wants obedience he gave us so much more his son. And what was his son? His son was obedient. I read it in the beginning. His son was obedient to the father. And because he was obedient to the father, that's how you and I became free. If the son was not obedient to the father, we would never be free. So we've got our freedom through the obedience of the son to the father. So what we go back and we say, if we look at the active response to the cross, we are looking, we're looking at Jesus, who was number one, was obedient and had so much love. How much love do you and I have? How much obedience do you and I have? towards the father when, when, when god did us a major favor when he did that for us what are we doing for god active response in to the cross is feeding off the word i said that just now i said just now that the, that the bible is the voice of god speaking to you this is what god says to you and i in hebrews 4 verse 12 he says for the word of god is alive and powerful now somebody say that with me for the word of god is alive and powerful it's sharper than any two-edged sword it's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It expresses our innermost thoughts and desires. That means actively living in response to the cross is that we allowing the word of God to penetrate right into our lives because that's his voice. That's the way he speaks to us. When we read, it's got to penetrate. That word is two-edged, so it goes in two, it goes in once and it can hit both ways. What it does, it splits everything. It's alive and it's powerful. This is what it is between soul and spirit. It take between soul and spirit, and it carries on between joint and marrow. It just it moves in there. Nothing, nothing can can, can do what that thing, what, 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 what the word of God penetrates. God's word penetrates, breaks through, does these things for us, gives us new life. And when that happens, we put that into fruition, a few things happen. When we, when we understand that the word of God, which is his voice, which is, which has happened on the cross, which is a, which is an echo from the cross. Let me call it that way. That's an echo from the cross. When that comes through for you and I, you and I pick that up. So we pick up the fruit from that because it comes into fruition. The word of comes into fruition. When the word comes into, into fruition, you and I start actively doing it. And that's the fruit where it, where we start doing these things. Psalm 45 verse three which I believe was written for, for, for bikers in the Bible. It says, put on your sword, O mighty warrior. You are glorious and majestic. And King, uh, King James Version says, ride you up to, into, into, into victory on, 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 on that. So I just, I just believe that, that this is how, how cool this, this word of God is. This is how, how the response from the cross should be, is that we should take the sword, put on the sword, because we are mighty warriors, been appointed by God, and we 
we become glorious and we become majestic through what God has done for you and I. The, the, the death of his son on the cross gave us a glorious life, a majestic life. And we can only put that into practice if we live in active response to the cross. My friend, I cannot reiterate that enough tonight. Our slogan after today, if you're listening to me, make it, write it down, put it somewhere. So I need to live in active response to the cross. What does that mean? What is it going to do? You know what it's going to do for you and I? I'm going to give you a few pointers. It's going to, the first thing it's going to do for you and I, it's going to, it's going to bring us into existence and bring us into a place of existence when we receive 100% that. James 1, 18, 20 says this this way. The Amplified Bible. You know, the Amplified Bible says it's so cool because it gives you the exact description what he's talking about. And he says, it was of his own will that he gave us birth as, as his children by the word of truth so that, would, so that we would be kind of first fruits of his creatures, a prime example of what he created to be set apart to himself, sanctified, made holy, his divine purpose. Wow. Can I say that again? It was of his own will that he gave us birth. He birthed us into something new, into something we didn't have. In other words, when we said, I want to live actively, my response is actively towards that cross. This is what happened. It says that he, of his own will, he gave us a new birth as his children. By the word of truth, the word that was spoken was truth. His son was truth. Everything that his son said was truth so that we would be kind of first fruit of his creatures. This, this is a new thing. That's why Jesus said we need to be reborn. So we become these newborn creatures. We will be a prime example of what God created through his son. And we would be set, aside, set apart for himself, for God himself, sanctified, made holy for his divine purpose. Now, that is a gift that the cross brought us. That is the gift that the cross has given us. That is the gift that Christ who died on that cross was taken down, was went into the tomb, rose again. We'll, we'll come to that on Monday. Rose again on the third day. And that's what we got. We got the sanctification. We were made holy. We received the divine purpose. My friend, you and I have this divine purpose. We need to connect with Christ all along. Before we continue, it is seriously important that we understand everything in this verse that I've just said. Let that soak in for you for a while so that you can actually put in into your mind the active response to the cross. Where are you with me at this point in time? Are you seeing, are you seeing the cross? Are you seeing that he was bruised, bled when he died, when, he, when his head hung, how he was insulted, how he was kicked, spat on, and he hung there for as a spectacle for the world to see. But he didn't do that for anybody else, but for you and me. Wow. What, what is our response to that? What do we say today? How do we, how do we latch onto that? How do, we, how do we really make that our own? Because you see, his will for us is so truthful. God's will will never lead us in a, in, in a, down a line path. It will be a, down a path of truth. We can only be truthful to ourselves through him. I have no truth in me if Christ doesn't reign in my life. I can have so many stories, but I can't have truth in me without God in my life. His word, every word in that Bible is truth. Every word speaking back to you and I is truth. We put that into practice, it happens. We, we speak to God, he covers us with his blood. We, we, we receive the Holy Spirit, that's truth, it happens. It becomes a relationship that you and I have because we are, we are his children and we set apart. We can only be set apart. Listen to Peter quickly. We can only be set apart if we live in active response to the cross. My friend, may God speak to you, into your heart and my heart today, asking us to become active and free children of God. When we, when we, when we understand this active living towards our response to the cross, it purifies us when we obey. It purifies us when we obey. The obedience brings purity. And Peter says it this way. He says in 1 Peter 1 22, he says, you were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love. Let me say that again. 
show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. You see, all of us in this world today, we need to learn to love one another. Because a unified love is an active response to the cross. That's what it is. And, and we could probably argue that. But there's so many things here. But let me just stay, stay on this for a while and say, we will only be cleaned and purified when we obey the truth that was given by us, to us by God. We will only be cleansed and purified when we obey the truth. And God is the truth. His son is the truth. This is the truth was spoken from the cross when Jesus said, it's time for me to go. It's time for me to be, to go through all these things. He knew what he was going to go through. If you go and read that, you'll see it's, it's, it's so, it's, it's heart wrenching. It's, 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 it's wrenching inside of a person that it tears your, your spirit apart what he went through just for you and I, just so that you and I could feel this freedom, that we could pick up this freedom just for you and I, just to say today that the cross was not for nothing. The cross needs my response and I need to make a response. Well, once we're done here this morning, I have to take my own life and put it before God and say, Lord, am I really doing these things that we're speaking about today? To make up for all these things, I don't want to pretend that I love you, Lord. I want to do this thing completely. I want to be sincere about what I'm doing. I want to love you through and through with my heart, soul, and mind. I want to be sincere. I want to be truthful. I, you know, you know what? Let me say this to you and write this down if you've got a pen with you. All right, write this down because this is so, so true. This is just like, it's just come up here to me now that sincerity and truthfulness cannot be split. Can I say that again? Sincerity and truthfulness cannot be split. And you cannot take sincere and be true. You've got, you can only be true when you're sincere. So truthfulness and sincerity will not be split. Every living person walking upon the face of this earth desires to be loved, true or false. You wanna argue with me? I think everybody in our hearts, every person walking on this earth, we desire to be loved deeply. We desire to be cared for deeply. Therefore, the desire should be returned to the others that you and I are, 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 are touching in our daily lives. If God reached out and he gave you his love, when you desired God's love and he gave it to you, that was his active response through the cross to you. Our, our active response to the cross towards God we should be, I want that, I want that love, Lord. I want to keep that. If your son died for me, if your son was, if, if, if he bled for me, I want to bleed for him. I want to die for him. And that's what I'm going to die to myself in this world. I'm going to die to the sin in this world. I'm going to die to all the wrong in this world. I'm going to die to the lies of this world. Because if I die to the lies of this world, I'm picking up the truth, the truth from heaven, the truth from the, truth from the throne room, the truth from the king. That's what I want to do. I want to be truthful in my, in my relationship with you, Lord. And you see, when I'm truthful in my relationship, that's responding to, 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 to what happened on the cross that day. And when I, when I respond to, to what happened on that cross that day, then I'm doing, I'm doing myself, not a favor. I'm doing, I'm giving myself what you gave me, Lord, something that I should have taken a long, long time ago. And, 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 and God's true to that because today, as we commemorate this day, all of us have gone through bad things in this, in maybe the last six months, the last 12 months, the last day, the last week, I don't know, but we're in this place where we are right now. We're in a lockdown. And I believe some places have increased their lockdown. We're in a lockdown. We, we've been set apart. What a better, what a lack of place to be, to be set apart on this Friday. Good Friday. On this Friday, when, 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 when Jesus was crucified, we, nobody can take your attention away from the cross today. God ordained for you and I to speak to one another this morning. God has ordained for you and I to come to a place and say, we want to live. We want to live in deep in deep love and all for one another. To love one another is to have no hidden agendas, my friend. Not talk about, 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 about other people, but love, love people the way God loves you and I. We are to take that into this world. We are to show this world what Christ is all about. We can only love each other with a Christ-like love, not with a human love. Human love comes short. Human love sometimes is lied about. God's love is a true love. Love people with all your heart. That's true love from God. Loving in, act, living in active response to the cross is true love. 
And that's what we need. And this is what this world needs, irrespective of what we look like and who we are. Because when, once we understand that, then we would understand. You say, living in active response to the cross, what else can it give me? I'll tell you what else it can do. It feeds you when you desire and you require it. If, you, if you've got a requirement and you have a desire, Jesus' love off the cross will actively start feeding you. Only if you allow that love into your life. 1 Peter 2 verse 2 says this, like newborn babies, newborn babies must have pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. When you come to know Jesus, my friend, when, he's your, when, he, when, when he gives you the salvation that you require, when you understand that love, you become a newborn baby. And the sad part about in today's life is some of us have met the Lord long ago. and We don't think we're babes anymore. We think, hey, I'm cool. I can make this thing. No, we're not. We're not. We remain babes. We remain children of God. He calls us children. That means he's the father. He calls us children because we're under his discipline. He calls us children because he loves us. And so every day we should crave for him. Every day we should have this thing that we, we want to, we want to, every day, every piece of word that I drink in is, is like spiritual milk that I drink in. This, what we're doing this morning from house to house and from person to person is a spiritual milk that God is pouring. He's pouring it into your lap. He's pouring it onto your table this morning. He's pouring it into your life. What are you going to do with the spiritual milk? You're going to drink it. You see, the more we drink it, the stronger we're going to get. And God's got this for you and I today. He says, because this is what it means when you start living in response to the cross. It's not, it's not for nothing. The cross wasn't for nothing. The cross was for everything. Just imagine on this day, so many thousands of years ago, what was Jesus was going through when they beat him and, 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 and when they... they they, they crucified him and people laughed at him. He was made a mockery. He had this little, little plaque above his head. That was not because of, that was to make fun out of him. Jesus, King of the Jews. He's not the King of the Jews. He's the King of all of us. He is the King, the only King, King Jesus. And he gives us, we can be, we can be under the authority of King Jesus when we respond. We respond to what happened on the cross. My friend, what's your response this morning as God's children? Do you choose to bring yourself to a place fruitfully into truth? In other words, allowing God to work in your life fruitfully, that his truth will grow, that that fruit will become abundant that it will become something that other people can pick from you? Have you decided in your life actively where you're going to go with this? Would you want to let God purify you this morning? What is your decision? Could you, just, could you submit to a new diet this morning? The milk of the word. The milk of the word. Could you, could you drink that in? Could you let that become solid in your life somewhere? Somewhere as you, as you and I walk along. This is the word that will strengthen and grow us, which is really needed in this life that you are. This is a supplement. We'll take it in as a daily supplement. There's so many supplements on the market right now. We'll take it in as a supplement to live in active response of what we need to do. Let us grow fully and experience complete salvation with, with, with King Jesus. Let us do that. Let us come to this place this morning and cry out for God's word to complete us living in active response to the cross. You see, when we do that, when we absolutely, you see, what happens there is, when sometimes we, we when we do rejected, there's judgment that, that falls into place when there's rejection. John 12, verse 48 says, but all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment in the truth I have spoken. So you can say to me today, Pete, well, I don't, I don't need that stuff. And I can say, well, you rejected it. If you're, response to what happened on the cross if your response is this to what happened on the cross i reject all those things i don't want anything to do with that then unfortunately there is judgment that will take place 
and and and, and it's not going to be pretty and it's not going to be colorful but you know what that's why god knew that god knew this that that's why he brought jesus in to the plan and said but i can't lose all my sheep we are we're the sheep or the shepherd we're the flock so he gives us this chance he says there's a, there's a cross choose don't reject it i don't want you to reject it but because there's judgment in rejection so we come this morning and we bow before that cross and we say lord wow we want to live in accuracy active response to that cross we want to be actively involved in your kingdom so that we can portray that cross into this world we want to be the duplicate of that cross we want to we we, we, we go through tough times and we think wow which is okay, how, how many people can take what we've taken no, no 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 how many people can take what jesus took only to set you and i free we also saw in the beginning and understood in the beginning when we started this thing that through his son he gave us the privilege of being a kind of first fruit remember that so we we, we part of we part of a harvest we part of a harvest we we the, we the prime example of what god created we the prior prime example of what he'll set apart once we receive him sanctified made holy for his divine purpose so that he can can use us in his holiness there's nothing nicer than when you're praying to God and you're calling on God and you're saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray to you this morning and ask you to be with me, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Mm -hmm.